I am thankful, thankful, thankful for God. Amen. Amen. And God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. The today the title is Enjoy Living in His Will. Everybody say enjoy. Enjoy. Living, living. in His Will. In His Will. And you know, I, I always seem to do this when it, right when I step up. I like to turn it down a little bit. And the reason being because if you're cold, you're not asleep. Uh, unless I freeze you. But, uh, praise God. Uh, I find this real interesting that this question gets asked. How many has ever heard this? That if it be God's will, I will be healed or whatever. Raise your hand. How many have ever heard that? How many of you know it's not true? Right. And the reason being, you say, well, Pastor Peter, it is true. Well, I guess you could make it true if that's what you speak out of your mouth, right? But, see... Of course, it's God's will for you to be healed. And that would be like saying, does God want everyone saved? He does, right? Amen. Okay. So if he wants you saved, which most people really can't see, why wouldn't he want you healed? Why wouldn't he want you set free? Why wouldn't he want you blessed? See, this is God's who he is at heart. First Timothy 2, 3 and 4, praise God. And, and, of course, we have it up here, too. Praise God. <laughs> this, is, this is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. Amen. Everyone. Everybody say everyone. Amen. Everyone. Hey, everybody turn around and look. Rich goes eating in the church. Sure am. Okay, just let me know. <laughs> so, uh, I just thought I'd share that. I would never embarrass people in this church, but y'all know that. But... <laughs> So, but the question always is, why aren't they healed? Everybody. Why aren't they set free? Why aren't everybody, okay, why didn't God just lay it across the board? Because, see, the, the thing is, it's free will. Unfortunately, it, well, I don't mean it unfortunately, because I really want it that way. It is choice. It has to be choice. Because if it's not choice, you're a robot. And the thing is, not everybody wants what you want. And I, I honestly, I'm telling you, when I was running healing centers and we were going, and uh, I know that Elizabeth and Dana remember this big time. I went to lay hands on a lady, and I walked up to her to lay hands on her. I mean, we were going and blowing. People were, I'm talking about things were just happening. And I mean, God, the power of God was in that place. I looked at this lady I knew was jacked up. She didn't ask me to pray for though. I walked toward her just like this, lay hands on her, and she did the matrix. She leaned back and wouldn't let me touch. No, 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 no. I want my disability check. <laughs> you remember that? I went, I, went, I went, Father, pray for me in the name of Jesus. I, I didn't know what to do. I, it's like I never heard nobody. I mean, she, her back wouldn't hurt. She did the matrix. I mean, she went down, leaned on, the bullets would have went over, you know. And she said, no, 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 no. But she knew. But here's the thing. She knew if I prayed for her, she was going to get healed. Amen. She just still got healed. She could lie to him, kept her milk. You know, I don't know. But the thing is, but she knew what was going on. And that just that, that just kind of blew me away. But see, if it be God's will, you're not going to find that nowhere in the Bible. I mean, the closest thing to it, which gets twisted, is James 4 15. And I want to address it. I don't know if I got it up there, but I don't do it. Okay. And, and, and that's where James is dealing, of course, with an arrogant folk saying, I'm going down here to this city to work for a year and make a big profit. And James says, you don't know what the future holds because life is but a vapor. And that's the, that's the closest thing to that that I've ever, ever found. And if you listen to even what I'm saying there, is there's no match. That's why salvation, healing, and breakthrough is now. Now, 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 now. It's always now. And the Bible talks about His will for us. I mean, it's all through the Bible, praise God. Now, don't, don't get mixed up with where you are right now. Everybody say where you are right now. No, no, I mean, I'm saying where are you? <laughs> where are you? Where are we at right now? Church. What's the name of church? Turning point of grace. Turning point, point of grace. You're in turning point of grace right now. But see, don't, don't get mixed up where you are actually in life or in time, if, you know, if you want to call it that.
Because the Bible, there's seven covenants. You know, and we got the Adamic, and they, they always put IC at the end of it. Adam covenant, but Adam, Adamic covenant, Noah, Noah covenant, uh, Abrahamic covenant. You know, there's so many different covenants with this. You got the Mosaic, David, um, what's that one? The Palestinian covenant is right there. But my favorite is the new covenant. <laughs> Amen. And the closest one to that is Abraham. Abraham is the closest thing to that to me. But see, the will of God for us is found in dozens of scripture. Everybody always asks, what's his will of God for me? Well, there's dozens. That's why I like, that's why I got this one right here. It's one of my favorites. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus, 1 Thessalonians 5. Now, I love that one, but um, what is the will of God? I'm going to use just a few, but in Hebrews 10.9, um, it says, Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. Now, so, Bible scholars, what do you think that's saying? I'm actually asking a question. Usually, I, like, I shut people down if they talk too much. <laughs> I, I, I actually did. Uh, well, there, I don't even know if these guys were here when I did this, but there was a guy that interrupted so much at chapel when I would do it at the mission. I got a t shirt that said, Jose, Jose be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> And I took off that jacket and pointed at it. And I gave it to him at the end. But he, he was a nice fellow. But man, my God, he would just interrupt so much. And just, oh, it, it eat me up. Because, he, I, and, and I said, look, look, he's, I got stuff to say. I said, you're not up front. When you're up front, you say what you want to say. And he couldn't get that. And, he, it just, and he's such a sweet, sweet man. He really is. But he's, he's got something to say all the time. And he'd say stuff and, and so I finally did that t-shirt. He said, fine, I won't say that. And the whole group went, yes! <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, bless his heart. See, it says the first, okay, he takes away the first in order to establish the second. God's will is to give you a better covenant. Amen. See, if you remember the transfiguration in Matthew 17, it has Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. And this is a really good example of this because you've got the law and the prophets right there. Elijah is way prophet. Moses brought the law, correct? Yeah. But Jesus is in the middle. And what does God say? He says, hear ye him, not hear ye them. The law is no longer over you. Amen. Because he didn't come to get rid of it. He come to fulfill it. So you're blessed and highly favored of the Lord and blessed. See, in Matthew 5, 17, Jesus said, He didn't come to destroy, but to fulfill the law of the prophets. There's your proof in the pudding right there. That Pastor Gary don't be making up scriptures. And so it's in the Bible. It really is. And I figured uh, Lewis can keep me straight by sticking them up there. That way people know I'm telling the truth. Amen. You know, I know this was this one isn't up there, but... In John 1, 17, when it says the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. If we, if we realize that you're in Christ, you're sanctified. And, hey, did I put Hebrews 10, 10 up there? Thank you, Lord. I'll have to look it up. See right here, it says, by this will. Now, what's that word right before will? This, I want you, this is kind of interesting. By this will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Christ. Christ once for all time. Now, since we're right there, I'm going to ask you something. If it says by this will, but then it says we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus. By this will, whose will are we talking about? Jesus' will. That's right. He's talking about himself. By this will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for how many times? All, all times. Everybody say all. All. And so because that's there, praise God, once and for all time, you are made holy forever according to Hebrews 10 and 10. Amen. Amen. See, you have been sanctified through the offering of... I, I can say this live. I mean, 
I know he, he actually, my little brother watches every one of my sermons. And uh, he called me up. Sorry, bro, but it's, it's cool. It's all right. He, he used to call me, he used to call me his Joseph Prince. And it blows up on who he is. That he's a real big grace guy. And actually, Dana said that about me also at one time. But he asked me, he said, Gary, man, Joseph Prince just said that God can't forgive you. He can't forgive the same sin twice. He goes, Prince said that. I said, okay, that's absolutely right. He goes, what do you mean it's absolutely right? Okay, if he's forgiven John of sin, of a sin, okay, if he brings it up the next day, why is he bringing up something he's already forgiven? Right. Right. See, I, and, and now I'm not saying you go out and just do what you want and you stab the people and I'm forgiving, Lord. God. No, I'm talking about all that. I'm talking about, the thing is, he, when he got saved, when Adrian got saved, I'm telling you, when David got saved, the Bible says that he was forgiven of all sin. Come on. Amen. That's right. Every sin. Now watch. You need to sure walk in, in, in a place of repentance. What, that doesn't mean walk around, oh God, forgive me, my sin, forgive me, my sin, forgive me, my sin. You, yeah, man, you all jacked up. I'm telling you right. It, it's all about being Christ conscious. Amen. If you're on his mind, because I promise you, you will mess up. But if you realize you're walking in forgiveness, you won't mess up as much. And you'll start stepping away from sin. Amen. You'll start doing the better things. Because see, you are made holy forever. And now that, see, the, the law focuses on you. Amen? Grace focuses on Jesus. Right? And can you keep the law and commandments? No, but hey, but Jesus did and does. See, watch Old covenant is on you. You shall not, or thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not. Right? Old covenant. New covenant is based on Jesus. I will put the laws in their hearts and minds. I will be made of either God. I will forgive their sins. I will remember their sins no more. See? It went from you to him. There's our set freeness. There's our blessedness. And because that happens... It's just, it's just a beautiful thing, and we, you don't have to go, well, you know, i, I got to perform this way. You ain't got to do nothing except receive Him. Mm. Right. And just live in Him. And it's so freeing to know that you're set free, you know? Christ fulfilled it all. Mm. Praise God. He fulfilled it. Amen? And so Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, and when you're a believer, and see... The crown of thorns is an interesting piece. And a lot of people talk about this during Easter. I thought it would fit real well right here with something. But you know how, remember under the Adamic covenant, you shall work by the sweat of your brow. But when Jesus had the thorns and he bled on the brow, you're no longer under that. But you're set free. And you know, you can have a sweatless blessing. Amen. You can walk in the freedom of God. Hallelujah. To the point that even addictions cannot dominate you anymore. That's right. Amen. See, you say, well, I should be free to do what I want. You should be free not to do them. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. I don't That's think good. you can get that far. Oh, I love drinking. I say it on live. I love drinking. But I don't need to. <laughs> not me. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was talking to somebody. I would never embarrass David out loud, but uh, we were talking about drinking. And see, if I drink beer, that's you can talk like this. I'm talking like this. When I drink beer, I'm a, the most loving guy in the world. You don't, I mean, hugging you and all that. Kind of like I am when I'm not drinking. Okay, so you really can't tell the difference. My wife is amazing. When I would drink beer, you really couldn't tell. If I touch liquor, oh, God. Oh my God! I, I, I hold. I start changing, <laughs> turn into the devil. You know, and different, there's different things. And it, but what's interesting is I'm not even talking about. See, even though drinking is not a sin, I'm sorry, it's the truth. It's abuse that makes it a sin. Excess of anything. So that's right. 
You remember we, we talked about this? You got the big fat preacher up there talking about quit drinking, quit smoking, but he eats three pieces of pie at supper, you know? There's gluttony right there. But see, we don't need to we don't need to point and add that because God will show you what you can and can't do. Amen. That's right. And you know, you don't want to offend others and stuff. So that's that's the reason I kind of had, even though I, I got to a point where I could do that and not get intoxicated, I'd stop at one or two. Mm -hmm. I thought it's really not that important to me, so I laid it down. And my son-in-law, Jerry, he said, why'd you quit drinking? I want to meet that Gary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just a nut. But, see, self-help does do a little bit, but the Lord helps you a lot more. Amen. And, you know, they'll talk about that you're loved and you're adored and you're special and you're best and you're blessed. And I agree with all that, right? I remember I Googled the word self-help. I, I didn't want to know. There's over 7 billion, 700 million sites on self-help. That's, right. That's a lot. That's one for every person on the planet and more, right? Or something. <laughs> And so, don't get me wrong, I mean, some of, some of the ideas help, and you can consume. Matter of fact, my dad, he died at 59 years old of alcoholism, but he, he quit through AA. And I remember talking to my pastor, and this was in Colorado Springs, I said, man, he quit drinking, but he, he didn't get set free with Jesus. He set through for free, he, got, he quit with uh, uh, AA. He said, I don't care how he quits. You know, he said, for you, you need, to, you need to enjoy the celebrations and quit making them the way you want them to be. Amen. As long as it happens. Right. How do you know God didn't have him go to AA? Right. See, we, we miss that. And so, Psalms 1 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Sometimes we get the wrong counsel. You ever notice whenever you're sitting there, you'll, you'll sit there and you say, Man, you know, you start trying to talk to somebody and they got the answer to your problems. They, and they're worse off than you are. How many of you are talking about? <laughs> Blessed is the man who walks not in the council of love. Ask God what to do. I know I say this quite often, but ask him. Lord, should I have this house? Lord Jesus, should I have this relationship? Lord, should I go, go on? I mean, ask him to be involved. Amen. That's why I say make the crooked places straight. That's right. He'll set your place, bless you before you step out. Amen. That's right. And something begins to happen when you do that. Now, I know there's human wisdom, but the type of wisdom I'm referring to is his way of doing and being right. Amen? Amen. It, it, it's real interesting. Everybody say David. David. David did so much fantastic, wonderful things in the Word. But one day, even though y'all know where I'm going to go with this, I want you to hear it anyway. One day he took a walk on the rooftop when all was well. Now, his men were out fighting and different things, but he's on the rooftop and he was relaxing and enjoying himself. And nothing wrong with that, guys. He walked over to the edge of the building. He looked over, and there's a woman bathing by her window. And I've heard preachers go, oh, it was a woman's fault. Shut up. You could turn your head. <laughs> but David became the first peeping Tom. <laughs> David was looking at Bathsheba bathing another man's wife. And he looked for a walk. So much that he said, he talked to his people, go find out who that woman is. Found out who she was. Okay, but it got worse. She's married, but he said, go get her and bring her to me. That's somebody else's wife. Of course, he slept with her. And here's what's interesting. The husband, Uriah, was a holy man. A godly man. Then he comes to us. Now this is the guy, you got to understand it. This is the guy that wrote Psalms. Well, most of them. Not all of them. This is the guy that had a relationship with God. This is the guy that saw miracle signs and wonders. This is the guy that brought down a 10 foot giant. Okay, he saw that. He would hear God and cry. This is where I'm going with it. This is why the Joseph effect needs to come into your life when you feel too much. He's walking right up and he sees her. He should have ran like Joseph. Right. Not God. Right. Amen. There's something happens. Everything went down. Everything. I'm telling you, everything went down. And, and of course, we know you go on into that. And he sent. Matter of fact, he sent the husband. 
And he brought her, he, he brought him in and he wouldn't sleep with his wife. And he said, why are you not sleeping? Go home, man, go enjoy yourself. He was trying to cover up his sin because he got pregnant. Mm. So he said, no. But, you know, he didn't say that. He said, the Ark of the Covenant is not even in a place of rest. Mm. See, Solomon, the, the son hadn't come along and built the temple. So here's it. The Ark of the Covenant was out there during war. And all this, he says, hey, if it's not resting, I'm not resting. Okay? So he's like, oh, man, he, he's trying to figure out, you know, what to do and how to do it. And he, uh, oh, I find this really interesting. Okay. Bathsheba, right? You know how you spell that, right? B-A-T-H. She was taking a bath. But anyway... <laughs> Anyway, I didn't say, what's that got to do with anything? I just thought that was funny, man. Bath sheep bathing in the window. But anyway, so. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I'm kidding. I, I, sometimes I say, why did I say that? so ignorant. <laughs> so, he said to Joab. Go and take him to the worst part of the fighting. Why? Wants to be killed. Yeah. Wants to try to cover up his sin. So he sends him, he dies, and well, I don't know what to say this. Nathan the prophet comes to him and says, Hey, did, if somebody did this, 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 and this, what would you do? Oh, I oh, I would be so mad. He goes, That person is you. And he goes, Oh. <laughs> Okay, and if you and this really don't have anything to do with where I'm going today, of course, he ends up bringing Bathsheba over, he marries her, makes it right, but they lose that child. And the thing is, I don't want you to lose this part. I don't care how holy you are or think you are. There's times it sounds so cowardly, but sometimes you need to run. That's right. If it keeps you from the enemy tries to suck you in with the slightest thing to pull you away from how powerful. I mean, there's times you're, man, Philip, you're on fire for God. You're excited. You're talking to me about the Lord. But I tell you what, the enemy will suck you right back into death. Is that true? Yeah. Why do we allow that? We think we're so smart. We, we, we can't. we got to listen to the Lord. Amen. And that's why people like Joseph that ran, but he became the most second most powerful person in all Egypt. That's right. Because he ran. Okay, I'm talking about walking away from sin. You know, and I hear preachers, oh, well, he was up there. He, you know, it says he was sleeping in the evening and got up. He was living a lazy life. He should have been out there with the soldiers. And shut up, man. The thing is, is there's nothing wrong with enjoying your life. Right. It's what you do in the idle time. That's right. That's all I'm saying. You can enjoy and laugh, but don't be looking at the people's windows. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with being successful and relaxed, but uh, what we need is more self-help from the Lord. Amen. And Psalms one, well, and Psalms one says, "Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly." So this tells us. That's why I wrote this down. Tells us that there is counsel in human wisdom, but man who does not walk in the wisdom according to to God, you end up listening to the world and you end up regretting it. That's right. And uh, the secret is your delight in Jesus and meditate upon him. Psalms 1, one yes, this right here is, is where it is. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by <laughs> rivers with an S. Plural. Rivers of water that bring forth fruit in its season. I want to say, there's when you get founded in the Word, nothing can pull you up. When you pull up your roots and say, "I'll be okay. I'm going to the dry places. I'll be all right." You in trouble? You going to... Amen. And that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like shaft which the wind drives away. I don't want to be shaft that's driven away. Amen? I don't want to be that guy. Amen? No, none of us want to be that way. But 
if you seek him first, there are hidden treasures. Yes. For you. Uh, Colossians 2. Uh, Colossians 2, 2 and 3. I think I, yes, I did. Praise God. I, I, yes, that's how I'm going. I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. I want them to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is Christ himself. The answer's in Christ, always. In him lie hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You say, oh, but I want, I want the money. It's lied right there. Come on. That right there will get you everything you want. If your wisdom and knowledge is in the word of God, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I have seen countless of people that had conditions that would cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars to be healed, instantly healed. Through just a touch of him and his garment. Amen. Amen. I've seen people totally just turn around financially. They're lo they lost everything when they trust God. And they say, okay, I'm going to do this no matter what. Bam! All of a sudden, finance, finances come blowing through. I've seen situations where a husband is just, oh, you want to beat him to death because he's acting a fool. But the wife still believes and prays for him. And all of a sudden, he turns around and becomes a man of God. Hallelujah. And stays there. And stays there. Everybody say stays there. Stays there. Remember, this is Solomon, the wisest man who was ever born with this wisdom. And he asked it, and it was given to him. He didn't have it before. And if God does it for one, he'll do it for another. Amen. And, and I, I know people kind of misquote, and they talk a lot about, well, they said there'll, there'll never be another person as wise as him. Right? As wise as him. So I believe you could be wiser. Amen. Amen. Oh, you're twisting the word. No, I'm not. I'm believing bigger. Amen? Yes. Amen? we got to believe bigger. Amen. Solomon, well, actually, uh, Solomon asked for... He, he asked for a hearing heart, I believe it is. And I don't know where it is, but I know it's in First Kings, uh, somewhere where he talks about a hearing heart. If you have a hearing heart, that means you hear what others don't. Right. He'll he'll give you the inside trade. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And there's something beautiful about that. Praise God. We're actually coming to a close here in a second. This is kind of interesting. Here at twelve o'clock. The kickoff, or not the kickoff, but the start of a game, a basketball game, where Caitlin Clark may break Pete Maravich's record from 12 to 3. And uh, it's really, it, you know, it's, it's just whatever, but it's still history. And I, I love to see things like that. And uh, Rich Cole is, is coming over by herself. She kicked Jimmy the curb. Jimmy got to watch the kids. She's going to come over and watch the game with me. <laughs> the first time she's done it. But uh, I want to watch this because these are once in a person's lifetime thing. I mean, the other record was 50 years ago. And it's a college girl as a junior breaking even a man's record. And stuff. So, oh, it's not the same. I think that's not what I'm saying. But according to stats, it's just neat. I mean, when you see a girl that can shoot 30 or 40 points a game, it's just amazing. We see anybody shoot 34 in college, okay? And pros is different. I mean, college. It's amazing. And here's why I'm telling you the story. I finished up. My wife says, oh, she's a big baby. Because she cries a lot. She does. And my daughter says, most champions are criers. I said, I must be a champion. <laughs> <laughs> but she does. I mean, oh, she'll argue with the ref and everything else. But usually, if you remember some of the greats, I mean, Larry Bird, oh my God. I mean, they, they used to get fights all the time. Michael Jordan, all that, the, 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 the cry babies. But they're cry babies, but they can back up the cry. That's true. Okay? Nobody likes a cry baby that can't back up the cry. And, but here's the deal we got something bigger than that. You call on the grace of God because law focuses on you, but grace focuses on Jesus, gives you the very thing you need to get what you believe in God for. Amen. If you have the wisdom of Jesus, not only will you be blessed, but you'll be able to hold on to the blessings in your life. Amen. That's where I want to close. Amen. 
to hold on to them. It's one thing to get them, but people lose them. You can, you can hold on to them if you stay focused on Christ. I don't care if things are, hell is raging at the right and raging at the left. If you focus on Christ, he'll bring you through. Amen. It's when we faint and give up. That's right. When things change. You'll know when they are. You'll know when it happens. And guess what? If something happens and you just feel you can't make it, call someone with like or greater faith than yours and they'll agree with you. Don't call Uncle Elmo. It's going to wind you to the, to the grave. Right? That's why like, if I had a condition, which I won't, but if I had a condition something happened, I'm not going to tell everybody because they'll help you die quick. That's right. yeah. Oh, bless your heart. Uncle Joe died from that and you got it. Oh, I don't want to hear that. I want to hear, you know what? By his stripes you're healed. That ain't going to be nothing. I, I want that in my life. That's right. He said, well, if you're not being realistic, I'm still healed and whole. I, I've got to believe that way. I don't want to go the other way. I've watched men of God on television faint, big time faint during the epidemic. Yep. Say things I thought would never come out of their mouth. They still got church. But I watched what they said. I watched what they said. Oh my God, I don't know if we're going I mean, I saw them, these faith guys sway, and then I saw some stand. Amen. Now, there's nothing wrong with faith. I mean, don't get me wrong, because I'm losing folk here. There's nothing wrong when you get attacked and you feel like fainting, but you've got to stand. Amen. You've got to stand on the Word of God. Yeah. And if you start knowing His will for your life, it will bring you out of wherever you're at. That's right. Amen. He'll set you free. Amen. With that closing, we opened a new store this weekend and, and I had to do something different than I normally do. I had to dress halfway nice and I worked the front door, kind of security and stuff, and I caught a couple I caught a couple of shoplifters and real nicely. One was an old lady, uh, and she went and she had her pocket stuff full. I watched her the whole time. I was standing there doing the, watching the store like this. And now, how you doing? Come on in. She goes walking out. Well, have a good day. I said, man, I'm like, you could have paid for that. She went, I, I forgot. <laughs> she walks up to the counter. She starts, and she goes on by the counter, seeing if I'm looking at her. She goes, start sticking them back on the shelf. Then she walks up. You know, I changed my mind. Mm -hmm. And the guy that did it also, same thing. He said, how did I forget that? That thing's $4.99. Is it really worth stealing? Right. You know what I mean? But anyway, I'm standing there doing that. And I'm, I'm watching people come in and out. And the excitement that people had to be in a store to buy something. The excitement they had. And uh, it was thriving. I mean, it was thriving. Saturday, Friday and Saturday. Yeah. And the beauty of it all, they were excited because they're about to buy something that was used. <laughs> and we had half the store on that open day was new. That's what we had tags and everything. I mean, we, it was ready. But they were excited about buying something with, with the money. And it was, when you go to shop or go get a haircut, it's going to change your life forever. Amen. You, you ever notice that? You feel good for a moment. Yeah. But if you can catch hold of who he is and become Christ conscious, you can be stable and set for the rest of your life and the life to come. Amen. And you are the head and not the tail. That's right. And you don't have to wait till the year or the, the yonder. You can have it now. That's right. They're, they're, I, I'm telling you, people are missing, but they can enjoy life now on earth as a prosperous, blessed, healed person. Amen? Amen? God is good, praise God. Let's stand up. Oh. Heavenly Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for loving us. I thank you for blessing us. I thank you for increasing us. I thank you for using us for your glory. Yes, Lord. I praise you, Lord, that you are wonderful. Yes. I thank you, God, that you are powerful. Yes. I thank you we can rely on you. Amen. 
Mm. And God, we know sometimes when you, we take it wrong because you're trying to show us to do something and we don't want to do it, but you're trying to bless us because the flesh doesn't, we want instant this and instant that. But Father, I thank you that you lead and guide us on where we're supposed to be. Let us fall in love with you more and more and more. Amen. I thank you for relationships that change lives. Yes, Lord. I thank you, God, that you bless Turning Point of Grace here in Wichita Falls, Texas. Yes, Jesus. I thank you that we are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Amen. I thank you, Lord, that people are set free. Hallelujah. I thank you, God, that our people are healed and blessed. And God, that you use us like never before. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for what you have in store for us. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy, Lord. I praise you, God, that we can we can be blessed because of who you are and what you are. And I thank you, Lord, so much that you have established your covenant with us now. And that we can walk in that and we can be within that and we can be blessed in that. And I thank you for what you have in store for us today. Amen. We love you and we praise you. And all Jesus people say it. Amen. 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 Hey, love somebody before you leave. Hallelujah.